It's no lie that Destiny 2 right now is in the middle of some pretty severe downtime, if that's even a good way to say it. But of course, on top of this, there are a lot of things that players want to see changed in the game. But despite the current sentiment towards the game, there is quite a lot of stuff that Bungie are talking about. I'm going to round up a few things in this video. Mark Noseworthy has tweeted about Destiny for the first time in quite some time. We have new details about the March update. On top of this, we have hints about the update coming in May. Of course, we're going to hear about that DLC very, very soon. There's a few other things I wanted to round up as well, so let's get into it. So of course, going into the launch for Destiny 2, Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy were kind of spokespeople for the game. But of course, since launch, it has been considerably quieter. And there are a lot of people in the player base who asked the question, where are Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy now? Mark Noseworthy actually spoke about this a few days ago. So he said, a question I get a lot on Twitter is why don't you tweet more about Destiny 2 and the state of the live game? The answer here is multifaceted. Firstly, the official channel Bungie is the best source for info about the evolving game. So if you want the latest news, that's who to follow. I get that people like to follow folks who make the things they care about because maybe they'll get to share inside info or because you're just interested to see what they have to say about random things. But secondly, my general rules of thumb on commenting on Destiny are if, firstly, I'm a spokesperson for an upcoming release because I'm working directly on it. Secondly, I need to clarify something I or someone else has recently said in an interview and it's important to correct it quickly. Thirdly, there's a cool but unimportant tidbit of info that hasn't made it into another info channel for some reason. And since D2 launched, number one hasn't been true, so I got real quiet about Destiny and will remain so for a long while. But he does go on to say, I care deeply about the game's future and I'm still processing feedback even when it's hard to hear. Don't take my silence as ignorance, others at Bungie are listening too. He goes on to say that you should follow people like Chris Barrett and Scott Taylor on Twitter if you want to hear about the day-to-day -day Destiny stuff. So really, it's as simple as that. I just thought I'd let you guys know because a lot of people do talk about Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy and their kind of presence, you know, around the community right now. So as always, sound off in the comment section about that. Moving on though, of course, we have the March 27th update coming very, very soon. One of the big features that a lot of people want to know about is of course the Nightfall Strike unique rewards that Bungie have spoken about. Chris Barrett did actually tweet and say each terrible villain that players face should have a very rare and powerful unique item themed to them that tumbles to the ground as they collapse into a pile of bones. He goes on to say that maybe occasionally, rarely, oh my god, what the f will this ever drop? Tumbles. So Bungie didn't actually give us a preview of any of this gear, but if you take some of the key words there, you have rare, powerful and unique themed to enemies. So we can assume that this stuff is going to take, you know, some level of investment to actually get hold of. Bungie did confirm that these unique items will drop inside of Nightfall Strikes on any difficulty. However, if you use challenge cards and presumably increase your score, you will have a higher chance at actually getting these drops. So of course, we don't really get an idea of exactly what they are, but they do say powerful. So presumably, you know, that sounds like a weapon or potentially even an exotic. We don't really know the rarity of these items. I would kind of temper expectations a little bit, but like I said, powerful. That doesn't even really sound like armor. I wouldn't necessarily define, you know, non-exotic armor as powerful in Destiny. You know, have to let me know what your best guesses would be. But a lot of people have sounded off saying, you know, that they really wanted to get a preview of these pieces of gear. And previously, Bungie, you know, had said that they intended to show something off. DMG said it was the intention. We cooked up a preview image for one of the uniques that I wanted to ship with the roadmap. But Bungie opted to let the community discover the items. Which I mean, if you're playing playing the game right now is certainly going to be a positive thing. I guess for folks not playing the game who aren't actually going to jump in until they know, you know, what these kind of rewards are, I guess you'll have to use the social channels, YouTube, Twitter, things like that to actually, you know, see what this stuff is. If you're wondering what else is going to be in the March 27th update, it has been spoken a lot, but of course we get the big sandbox tuning changes. This is going to affect the Crucible, PvE, weapons, subclasses, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I did actually do a very big video with pretty much all of the details you could possibly know about this update, as well as a Q&A, so I'll leave that in the description below, but there will be eight player rumble as well as Mayhem and Iron Banner 6v6 added into a weekly crucible rotation. Quitter penalties for the crucible, repeat crucible map and strike protection, exotic repetition reduction, companion vendor viewing, and of course the Nightfall unique rewards. Now with season three and the big May update, as well as the DLC launching in probably something like six weeks from now, we're going to be getting a ton more information from Bungie about the May update. So they did clarify that they'll start giving us details pretty soon. 
John Wisniewski in particular has been teasing a lot of stuff about the exotic changes coming in this update. He gave a mini tease recently, calling Drango Unchained meme right now before this update launches. Of course, Drang pairs with the Sturm. They've confirmed that the Sturm hand cannon, as well as basically all of the exotics in the game, will be receiving, you know, a pretty big rework. And of course, in the case of Drang being a sidearm as well, sidearms are actually getting a buff in the March 27th update. That's certainly going to be very interesting. But someone on Reddit actually spoke to DMG about being clear and concise with the updates that we'll be getting down the road. DMG said the weapon tuning has been noted for update 1.2.0 in the roadmap for some time. This is specifically for the exotics, but he adds that leading up to launch, we're planning to show some changes via video. So we should be getting basically exotic weapon buff demos, kind of similar to what they did with the sniper clip from before, presumably showing some of these reworked exotics. There was a bit of a discussion some of you guys may be interested about in returning content from D1. So some people on Reddit were actually saying they didn't like the fact that Bungie had referred to some of the returning content as new content. And Cosmo said, we're not going to call maps or modes added from OG Destiny new content. We see a lot of feedback about bringing things from Destiny 1 like Rumble and 6v6 and have decided to act on it. We're excited to see these features come to Destiny 2, but we're not trying to portray them as brand new content. And someone pointed out that one of the trailers for Crimson Days actually advertised the Burnout map, which is of course a remake of the Burning Shrine, as new. And Cosmo does say, that's a good point. I was extremely deliberate in describing the map when it was first announced, but it missed the text in the trailer. And Cosmo basically said they want to try and avoid this stuff. They want to bring back old favorites, but not at the expense of actually making new content. And when folks ask me about that, you know, what do you think of returning stuff from Destiny 1? That's my primary kind of concern with it. You know, is it valuable inside of Destiny 2? Is it going to provide some kind of value to the player? I think certain, you know, weapons, certain maps, certain things from Destiny's history are definitely still valuable to the game and to the franchise. But I don't think that we should ever see old content outweigh new content when it comes to expansions and stuff like that. Can't really complain about them bringing back old stuff in free updates or what are technically free updates. But I agree that it shouldn't be sold in DLC and it shouldn't be referred to as new content. Let me know what you guys think below. But now we have some more miscellaneous stuff that I wanted to point out briefly. So a user called Stormworm on Reddit pointed out that there are some pretty interesting images inside of the PC vidoc for Destiny 2. So you actually see them kind of developing Destiny 2 in one of the clips. You can see this area on screen right here and the buildings you can see on screen are very similar to the Dato. I believe that's how you say it. It's one of the factions they actually built on Mars as well as Titan in the Destiny universe. And they show some comparison screenshots right here and this is of Blind Watch inside of Destiny 1. Now the area on the screen some people have said looks kind of like Titan which I totally agree but in this one screenshot right here you do see these kind of rocks up on the left hand side right there that have that very kind of warm orangey red glow that you do see on kind of Martian terrain. They also pointed out that interestingly you can see what looks like snow on the screen right there and so basically people are discussing the possibility that this could actually be you know a very early development area on Mars where you can both see the kind of Martian terrain and snow and of course the next DLC is supposedly going to be set on one of the ice caps of Mars. So I think it's a pretty interesting idea. A lot of people have said this could simply be Titan in Destiny 2 which I do agree with. It's possible. The buildings do actually have slightly different colors although they are you know the same kind of models and stuff like that. But I'd be curious to hear what you think. Do you think this could be you know an early development version of the area that we're going to get in the second DLC for Destiny 2? But Cloud L Triple X V also posted a pretty interesting video. And strangely enough you can find 10 gates actually outside of the map near to the Lake of Shadows strike in the European Dead Zone. And these gates are all kind of lined up but they're all interactable. You can actually open the gates which is pretty interesting. That's a mechanic that you can't do elsewhere in Destiny as far as I'm aware. The gates are actually out of the map but the prompt where you can open the gates actually appears inside of an accessible area in the Lake of Shadows strike. So it's pretty interesting. It could just be you know a ghost of development something they were playing around with. Some people think it could be a trigger for a quest or something like that. Personally I think it's just kind of development stuff that got left behind. But again I'd be curious to hear what you think. I'll also link that video in the description below. Also Stormworm on Reddit pointed out that you could actually see the records tab in the Destiny 2 UI from the guided games trailer back in May of 2017. And it's certainly pretty interesting because we actually don't have a records tab in Destiny 2 right now. Back in D1 we had the record books and everything like that that were kept in the record tab. And so you know people are saying why did you remove this? I totally agree records is something that we should have in Destiny 2. In terms of my opinion of why we don't actually have this in the game it's probably the case that this was you know a records tab built into the UI but that doesn't necessarily mean that Bungie had any records 
to actually keep at the time. You know, they hadn't necessarily built those systems. And presumably it was just something they couldn't get finished in time for launch. So perhaps it's something we will actually see at some point in the future. Anyway, guys, that is going to sum up the video. I know there was a lot of stuff to talk about in this video. Let me know your thoughts about the March update, though, what you think these unique pieces of gear could actually be. Any exotic changes that you're hoping to see going into the May update. Like I've said, it's going to be literally in the next couple of weeks, we're probably going to get a DLC reveal and we don't know any of the new features that could be coming in that expansion. So it's possible that there could be some, you know, improvements to Destiny 2 beyond the fact that there will be new content. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, guys, a like is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe to see more Destiny 2 content if you want to. For now, though, I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you very soon. Thank you